Technological Department, that is IMD, is expected to boost Kharif production and replenish the reservoir levels. Strengthening agricultural sector activity is expected to boost rural consumption. On the other hand, sustained buoyancy in services activity should continue to support urban consumption. The healthy balance sheets of banks and corporates, governments continued thrust on capex, high capacity utilization and business optimism augur well for investment activity. External demand should get a fillip from improving prospects of global trade. Taking all these factors in, into consideration, real GDP growth for the current financial year 2024-25 is projected at 7.2%. Let me repeat, the GDP growth that we are now projecting for the current financial year 2024-25 is 7.2%, with Q1 at 7.3%, Q2 at 7.2%, Q3 at 7.3% and Q4 at 7.2%. The risks are evenly balanced. I would now like to focus on inflation. CPI headline inflation softened further during the months of March and April, though persisting food inflation pressures offset the gains of disinflation in core and deflation in fuel groups. Despite some moderation, pulses and vegetables inflation remained firmly in double digits. Vegetable prices are experiencing a summer uptick following a, following a, a shallow winter season correction. The deflationary trend in fuel was driven primarily by the LPG price cuts in early March. Coal inflation softened for the 11th consecutive month since June 2023. Services inflation moderated to a historic low and uh, goods inflation remained contained. The exceptionally hot summer season and the low reservoir levels may put stress on the summer crop of vegetables and fruits. The rubby arrivals of pulses and vegetables need to be carefully monitored. Global food prices have also started inching up. Prices of industrial metals have registered double-digit growth in the current calendar year so far. These trends, if sustained, could accentuate the recent uptick in input cost conditions for farms. On the other hand, the forecast of above-normal monsoon bodes well for the Kharif season. Wheat procurement has surpassed last year's level. In fact, the buffer stocks of wheat and rice are well above the norms. These developments could bring respite to food inflation pressures, particularly in cereals and pulses. The outlook on crude oil prices remains uncertain due to geopolitical tensions. Assuming a normal monsoon, CPI inflation for 2024-25 is projected at 4.5%, with Q1 at 4.9%, Q2 at 3.8%, Q3 at 4.6% and Q4 at 4.5%. The risks are evenly balanced. So thus, as you can see, the GDP growth projection, we have increased it from 7%, which we gave out in the last MPC meeting. We have increased it to 7.2%. And the inflation projection, the average for the year, uh, we have retained it at 4.5% uh, as, as it was in the last MPC meeting. And uh, I have explained there are good reasons why we have increased the GDP uh, forecast, the GDP projection for the current year. Now, what do these inflation and growth conditions mean for monetary policy? That is the question, and I would like to answer that. The developments relating to growth and inflation are unfolding as per our expectations. When the, when, <coughs> when the projected GDP growth of 7.2% for 2024-25 materializes, it will be the fourth consecutive year of growth at or above 7%. Headline CPI continues to be on a disinflationary trajectory. Monetary policy has played an important role in this process. This is evident from the decline in headline inflation 
by 2.3 percentage points between the first quarter of 22-23 and the fourth quarter of 23-24. Supply side developments and government measures have also contributed to this moderation of headline inflation. Repeated food price shocks, however, slowed down the overall disinflation process. According to our projections, the second quarter of 2024-25 is likely to see some correction in headline inflation. But this is likely to be one-off on account of favorable base effects and may reverse in the third quarter. If you look at the projections we have given, uh, then it becomes very clear that in the second quarter, the headline inflation is likely to come down to about 3.8 percent and thereafter again it goes up uh, and we have given the numbers in the statement and I have already read it out earlier. Uh, uh, at the current juncture, therefore, the uncertainties related to food price outlook warrant close monitoring, especially their spillover risks to headline inflation. In parallel, the behavior of the core component also needs to be watched carefully. We need a descent, to inf we need a descent of inflation to 4% target on a durable basis while supporting growth. Now, there is a view that in matters of monetary policy, the Reserve Bank is guided by the principle of follow the Fed. I would like to un unambiguously state that while we do keep a watch on the while we do keep a watch on whether clouds are building up or clearing out in the distant horizon, we play the game according to the local weather and pitch conditions. In other words, while we do consider the impact of monetary policy in advanced economies on Indian markets, our actions are primarily dependent and primarily determined by the domestic growth inflation conditions and the outlook. I have said this uh, several times earlier, but it becomes necessary to restate the position and retrade this so that there is clarity in the mind of market participants and other stakeholders and uh, as a result of which uh, uh, they do not board the wrong bus. Liquidity and financial conditions, that is the next part which I would like to highlight. During the current financial year so far, System liquidity transited from surplus to deficit conditions and then again back to surplus in early June. In consonance with the commitment made in the April policy statement of remaining nimble and flexible in liquidity management and in view of the shifting liquidity dynamics, the Reserve Bank mopped up surplus liquidity through variable rate reverse repo auctions, that is VRRR auctions, during the first half of April, while injecting liquidity through variable rate repo operations, that is VRR operations, in the latter part of April and in May. In the first week of June, however, VRRR auctions have been conducted. Banks' records to the marginal standing facility, that is MSF, under the liquidity adjustment facility, remained low during 2024-25, that is in the current year, so far. Now, mirroring the liquidity dynamics, which I just explained, uh, the weighted average call rate, that is WACR, on an average remained close to the middle of the corridor. Now, I have explained, I mean, for uh, common uh, listeners and for others, uh, I have explained what exactly the corridor means in the footnote. And let me also state here that a lot of, uh, you know, many of, most of the statements which I am making are backed by data and the data is given in the footnotes and uh, uh, I would encourage uh, you to have a look at uh, footnotes to understand why we are making certain statements. So mirroring the liquidity dynamics, as I said, the weighted average call rate that is WACR on an average remained close to the middle of the corridor. Across the term money market segment, the yields on certificates of deposit, that is CDs, Commercial papers, that is CP, issued by non-banking financial companies, that is NBFCs, and three-month treasury bills, that is T-bills, also eased. In the credit market, monetary transmission remains ongoing. As you would be aware, the Central Board of the Reserve Bank decided to transfer rupees 2.11 lakh crore, 
as surplus to the central government for the accounting year 2023-24. As the economy remains robust and resilient, the central board decided to utilize this opportunity to increase the risk provisioning under the contingent reserve buffer to 6.5% of the reserve bank's balance sheet for 2023-24 from 6% in 2022-23. In, uh, in other words, the contingent reserve buffer, which was 6% in 22-23, has been enhanced, was enhanced by the central board to 6.5% in the current, uh, for the year 22-23. Now, this risk provisioning, that is this provision for contingent reserve buffer or CRB as we call it, this would further strengthen the reserve bank's balance sheet. Prudence is at the core of our standard operating procedure. The Indian rupee moved in a narrow range with a low volatility during 2024-25 so far. That is up to June 5th and uh, that's the figure I have given. Now this has happened despite uh, trading, despite the rupee trading under pressure amidst foreign portfolio that is FPI outflows. The relative stability of the Indian rupee bears testimony to India's sound and resilient economic fundamentals and its macroeconomic and financial stability and improvement in the external outlook. Looking ahead, the Reserve Bank will, and I'm providing some, you know, kind of a forward guidance here with regard to liquidity and our approach to the markets. Looking ahead, the Reserve Bank will continue to be nimble and flexible in its liquidity management through main and fine-tuning operations in both repo and reverse repo. We will deploy an appropriate mix of instruments to modulate both frictional and durable liquidity so as to ensure that money market interest rates evolve in an orderly manner which preserves financial stability. As our actions over the recent period has, have shown, the Reserve Bank stands committed to maintain stability and orderliness in all segments of financial markets and institutions regulated by it. I would like to read this sentence once again uh, for clarity. And it's not just for clarity, but to reiterate the position. As our actions over the recent period have shown, the Reserve Bank stands committed to maintain stability and orderliness in all segments of financial markets and institutions regulated by it. And this is consistent with our approach, which we have been adopting even during COVID times, we adopted the same approach and thereafter we have continued. So therefore, our focus is to ensure uh, stability and orderliness in all segments of uh, financial markets and institutions which are regulated by the Reserve Bank. I would now turn to financial uh, stability. The annual financial results of 2023-24 indicate that the banking system remained sound and resilient, backed by improvement in asset quality, enhanced provisioning for bad loans, sustained capital adequacy, and rise in profitability. The non-banking financial companies, that is NBFCs, also displayed strong financials in line with the banking sector. Notably, the gross non-performing assets, that is the GNPAs of scheduled commercial banks, and NBFCs are below 3% of total advances at the end of March 2024. It is important that regulated entities should continue to improve their governance standards, risk management practices, and compliance culture across the organization. In November last year, we had flagged certain, certain concerns on excessive growth in unsecured retail loans and over-reliance of NBFCs on bank funding. Recent data suggests that there is some moderation in these loans and advances. We are closely monitoring the incoming data to ascertain if further measures are necessary. The boards and top management of regulated entities should ensure that risk limits and exposures for each line of business are kept well within their respective risk appetite framework. The persisting gap between credit and deposit growth rates warrants a rethink 
by the boards of banks to re-strategize their business plans. A prudent balance between asset and liabilities has to be maintained. Customer protection remains on top of the Reserve Bank's priorities. In general, we have observed that the guidelines on key fact statement, in fact, I have explained key fact statement also in the footnote. The customer, customer protection, as I am just repeating, customer protection remains on top of Reserve Bank's priorities. Uh, in fact, uh, it would be of interest uh, to you that in this year's annual report, we have a separate box item which lists out the customer-centric uh, measures that uh, the Reserve Bank has taken. And in the same uh, vein, we have also a box item in the annual report which has just been released uh, recently. There is a box item on the number of regulatory measures which were taken after carrying out stakeholder consultations. And these two box items, uh, I would encourage uh, you know, those who are interested to please have a look at them. Uh, so, in general, we have observed that the guidelines on key fact statement are followed. But a few regulated entities still charge fees, etc., that are not specified or disclosed in the key fact statement, that is KFS. It has also been observed that in some microfinance institutions and NBFCs, that the interest rates on small value loans are high and appear to be usurious. The regulatory freedom enjoyed by the regulated entities in respect of interest rates and charges should be used.